Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy to see you here today. I just wanted to talk today about seven phrases that have really helped me build resilience. Seven phrases that I kind of go back and think about at different points in my life when it's really hard for me to get through. These are all really common phrases that I'm sure you've heard before. And if somebody coined them and I don't know about it, I apologize. They're so common though that a lot of people have said them before. So, so that's why I'm not attributing any of the phrases to any person so that I can't say that I did it wrong. The first phrase is nothing is permanent. This is a phrase that we say to our kids in different areas, you know, nothing lasts forever. This is something that I have really clung to over the years, just nothing is permanent. This misery that I'm in right now is not permanent. I do not have to stay here. I can't stay here even if I wanted to because it's definitely not permanent. Buddhism and Taoism are kind of built on the foundation of non-permanence, which I just really love. No matter how sick you are, something's gonna change about it. And you are not going to say, stay in this place forever. Another phrase actually came from a guided meditation that I took at one point on pain reduction and it is pain is a wave, not a solid. And I love that so much because, you know, we kind of treat it like a solid, almost like a solid object, like a bad guy in our body. Where does it hurt? It hurts right here. You know, right here is where the hurt is, is where the hurt lives. But if you really take a moment to check in with your body and feel the pain, you realize that it ebbs and it flows and it kind of moves around a little bit and it pulses or it throbs. And it's so nice thinking about it as a wave. You have a wave of pain and not a solid pain object, not like a solid pain demon that lives inside your body. This was really helpful for me because it allowed me to view it more as an energy flowing through me rather than something that I kind of had to cut out with a knife. Another mantra that I always clung to was you are always safe. I love this so much because it kind of goes back to the idea of a bigger picture, a bigger creator, somebody who is calling the shots and walking you through your life in the way that it was supposed to happen. So I love this because it's like, whether or not you believe in some sort of afterlife, you will die at some point, all humans do, and there is safety in that. We are genetically hardwired to be afraid of death. That's what keeps us alive. That's what prolongs the species, promotes the species, I don't know. But if you think about it, you are always safe, even if you're in pain, even if you're in mortal danger, because you will die at some point and you are safe. You are safe in that. You were born, you lived, and then you died. And so if you think about it in the context of there is somebody that planned your life, whether it was you before you were born, a higher creator, somebody calling the shot, something, there is safety in that, that you are playing out a story that you were always meant to play out. So I love that and I've come back to that mantra so many times. I am always safe, even if I die. I am always safe. Another one that kind of goes along with that idea of a higher power is it is happening for you and not to you. Oftentimes our ego gets in the way and we kind of have this puffed up image of, well, why should this happen to me? I never did anything bad enough for this to happen to me. But the real idea is what are you getting out of it? What amazing life lessons and gifts are you getting out of this experience? And how is this working for you and not happening to you? Happening to you is kind of like, you're almost under this shell just waiting for it to be over. Happening for you is like, oh wow, what can I do with this? How can I use this for the betterment of myself or for the world at large? Another phrase that I've talked about a lot is, and then what? Whenever I have like this, you know, deep, dark fear of something, I will bring up the phrase in my mind, and then what? So, you know, I'm absolutely terrified of going broke, uh, my boyfriend breaking up with me, losing my apartment, losing my job, losing my kid for some reason. And you think about it, and it's like, while all those things are truly going to be devastating things, and then what? 
How can you use all of those things? How can you grow from all of those things? How can you take the gems out of that and be able to give that to another person in a way that nobody else would be able to do it? My YouTube is an example of that. I feel like I would really went through the ringer with all of my misdiagnoses and everything like that. And I know there are a lot of girls on YouTube that have the exact same autoimmune condition that I do, that have way more followers talking about way bigger things, doing it more skillfully than I do. But it's like, I am giving this back. I am using my experiences to give it back in a way that only I can explain. To say things in a way, in my own voice, that hopefully will reach people that weren't able to be reached in another way. Or will add on to all those wonderful people who are already out on YouTube that already have wonderful messages. Maybe I will say things in just a tiny different way that will help one person out there. Number six, this one I am going to attribute to a guy because I know exactly who said it first. It is Alan Watts's phrase, think of yourself as a cloud. I love this. He has a lot of speeches where people have made YouTube videos with music playing in the background and beautiful scenic views, just hearing him talk about different things. And one of the things that he says is to think of yourself as a cloud. Think of yourself as this fluid object with life flowing through you and you flowing along with life. He was talking about, have you ever seen a misshapen cloud? Or I think he said a wave of poor design. You know, there's all these waves crashing on the shore and you're like, mm, that one's not the best. I don't like that one. And so when we think of ourselves, we think of ourselves in standards, in cookie cutter fashion, where it's like, well, I'm not as good as this person at this thing, or I have it worse than this person in this area or something like that. And it's like, if you think of yourself as fluid, as malleable, as flowing through something with things flowing through you, it allows space for joy and getting things wrong or right, but it doesn't matter because it's all flowing all the time and all these aspects, the parts of you that are in pain, the parts of you that are joyful and whole, all of those things are part of you and it's constantly moving and it's constantly changing and it's all good. So that is one I definitely come back to when I get in more rigid thinking. I have, for those of you that know astrology, I am fixed. Like I have so many planets either in Scorpio, Aquarius, or Leo. Like it's, it's like I am very rigid in my thinking and if things are not perfectly correct, it causes anxiety in me. That is one thing that I keep coming back to, which is just very fluid, accepting, loving vibrations where I'm just viewing myself as a cloud and everything is happening around me and I'm just flowing along with it. Final phrase I'm gonna leave you guys with is you always have enough for this moment. That is one, working in the job that I work at, working in jobs that I've worked at in the past, scarcity and lack mindset are prevalent. I've worked with the population who are experiencing homelessness. I have also worked with people who are experiencing financial difficulties and things like that. And it has always been my job to help them, help connect them to resources. So one thing that I always think about is if you are breathing, if you are alive in this moment, you have enough for this moment. You have enough nutrition. You have enough energy for this moment. You have enough financially for this exact moment in time. You have enough stamina. You have enough courage. You have enough confidence for this exact moment in time. And so if you think about that and you really rest in that knowledge, you know that whatever the universe throws at you, whatever little things pop up that are difficulties, you will always have enough for that exact time. Well guys, those were my mantras and phrases that have really helped me over the years. Drop a comment below, tell me what your favorite phrases are, things that have really helped you over the years, and maybe we can all learn from each other. See ya.